On the 28th of February 2019, players of old school RuneScape discovered that the game's most expensive item had received its own respawn point outside the farming guild. The infinite supply of twisted bows remained in game for only 32 minutes, but that was enough time for multiple accounts to collect and distribute the bows to the wider market. Thanks to the quick reports sent by players and Jagex's fast response, the price of the item didn't see any consequences, as the accounts attempting to abuse the bug were all actioned upon, and the bows that entered supply were removed from the game. But it does make you question, what on earth happened that made a developer randomly add an item spawn of this nature? Randomly being the only item in old school's history to surpass 1 billion GP. While this may seem like the result of a rogue J-mod, the truth is luckily a lot simpler. Jagex messes up quite a lot. And though the 2019 incident is the most known about a developer mistake in RuneScape's many years, it's far from the only one. Some might remember the bug involving the Birthorp Agility course, where some random piece of tripwire seemed to be stuck below the course. If you interacted with it, you'd be teleported to the Elven Lance, despite not having completed the required quests. Following its developer, Mod Stew, the issue likely stemmed from the 2014 rework of both Birthorp and Letia, where the tripwire was probably considered to be included as an obstacle in the Birthorp course. But seeing it wasn't used and due to its placement, it was simply forgotten on release. Jagex reuses assets quite often to save time in development, and seeing the tripwire wasn't supposed to be there, the developer just likely never got around to removing the coordinates it'd teleport your character to when interacting with it. Now you'd think those are pretty bad. The Twisted Bow especially is pretty game-breaking, but the further back into the game's history we go, you'll find there are far more mistakes to dig into. Like the CEO mod Pip said in the recently released history book, the Jagex strategy is to release first and fix later, a strategy that leads to some pretty damaging results. Here's some of my favorites. In September 2010, Jagex released the developer console for players to use. Previously a Jagex-only debug panel to display information, it was also added as a safer replacement for chatbox commands for Jagex moderators to use in-game. Seeing it would now be available to players, they had to add a Jmod filter to some of the more dangerous commands. Though they did remove the worst ones, such as item spawns, mutes and bans, they had forgotten some that are easier to overlook. Typing in tools, for example, would open up the Rotten Potato interface, a year before the item became famous when a player stole it in Steel in Creation. Though this didn't spawn the actual potato, players were still able to toy around with its options. Obviously, this was removed shortly after the update. Just a month after, in October 2010, the same group that in 2011 would in fact steal the Rotten Potato, and in 2012 become some of the people behind RuneScape's worst bug in history, found out they could break into the Draenor Bank robbery cutscene and walk around as they pleased. For those familiar with the cutscene, you'll know that it shows how the wise old man obtained his blue party hat by killing a player's spoof. A party hat is dropped and picked up by the wise old man. However, when the cutscene was originally developed, the developer didn't expect anyone to actually break into the cutscene, and thus there was no reason to waste time making a brand new blue party hat item, so why not use the real deal? <laughs> Thanks to Jagex's tracking tools when it comes to high-value trades, it didn't take long before Jagex found out there were blue party hats being traded in large quantities and promptly followed the tracks to the source, banning several accounts in the process and removed hundreds of blue party hats from circulation. In September 2020, the old school developers decided to remove attackable spiders in the Arboretum in Darkmayor and replace them with an unattackable kind. Though the new spiders definitely couldn't be attacked, they did spawn feral vampires which would jump up at you when you got too close, trying to murder anyone who just wanted to cut some blister wood. In 2004, when the player moderators were released to the game and the hidden PMOD forums came along with it, it didn't take long for normal players to figure out that, though they couldn't see the forums on their forum list, they could access it given they had a link. As such, black market websites had the time of their lives spreading around the super-secret PMOD forums on the day of release. Now, the crown jewel. As some of you know, when Jagex released the Evolution of Combat in 2012, a new combat formula was released with it. The formula removed constitution and prayer as combat skills and thus allowed level 3 purists to train these skills without gaining combat levels. Sometime later, Jagex reverted the combat update and promised a skill reset to be added to Lumbridge for purists to return these skills to the lowest level. I can tell you think you know where this is going, but trust me, you don't. 
but to explain this one I gotta give a little background. You see, Jackex deals with thousands of account appeals every single day. And though they're doing their best, not every employee is as experienced and some might have a bad day. Mistakes happen, something the RuneScape community knows fairly well, which means hijackers might get access to the wrong account. But not all accounts should be let back into the game. This could be rule breakers like famous bug abusers or real world traders, or even accounts of players who passed away and got banned by the request of family members to avoid the account getting into the wrong hands. To really make sure no such account is ever accessed by the wrong person, Jagex implemented a way to reset handpicked accounts constitution level to zero, and thus also put a life points to zero, making the account constantly die over and over again, making it unplayable. Now you can see where this is going. <laughs> the possibility to reset accounts isn't a feature shared by all Jagex staff, simply because not all staff needs to access that feature, one such role being content developers. So the Jmod developing the reset system didn't account for the lowest level not being what the Jagex systems claims is the lowest level, and thus applied 0 HP to any account who chose to reset constitution back to scratch. Like this, any pure who attempted to reset just died over and over again. Also, this bug was fixed shortly after the update, but it's still pretty amusing to imagine pures dying all over the place. Imagine if Iron Man mode was released at that point. Thank you all so much for watching this little snippet of times Jagex developers made some teeny tiny mistakes. I got a few requests to cover the Twisted Bow incident, but there simply wasn't enough info there to justify its own video, so I figured I'd smack on some additional failures from over the years. It makes you wonder though, what other mistakes are hidden in the game today? You know, besides me playing it. My name is Will Miss it, and I'll see you all later.